right time for another draft science video presentation so we'll read some dopey interaction style type comments from people <laughs> you know just you know really earthlings so fucking stupid uh, so anyway um i do have three videos okay um links below uh, the sensible answer to gravity, energy, and photons. What is a photon? Um, 15 minutes or so each, and um, really, those are what you have to argue with. Um, and if you don't watch those videos and just recite crap on people's videos, it's just kind of rude, actually, um, to assume, okay, that nobody else has any other... Uh, description of reality except for your silly notions anyway so he calls himself ether theorist here so it's just shit thinker okay and now you're gonna shit talk oh okay so that makes sense <laughs> yeah so you're basically telling me you're an idiot by doing that but fine whatever uh, you do realize that your theory will have a <clears throat> interference pattern with one slit yes and that's an established fact in the real world, idiot. So this is, you know, this is the part that, you know, the Feynman's of the world and all these people um, describing the whole circumstance so grotesquely inaccurate and nobody takes responsibility for any of that. None of these defenders of conventional physics. And this is clearly a misimpression they give the world that somehow single slits aren't doing exactly the same frickin' thing. They make the same frickin' pattern, except it doesn't have a couple of breaks in it. It doesn't have a little bright, you know, <laughs> a brighter bright spot thing. But it's, it's the same pattern, same mechanism. Um, and they've clearly done everything they can to give people this misimpression that there's something else happening. There's some sort of concept called diffraction. Again, the, the Dr. Lincoln. Do you think a Dr. Lincoln's ever going to make the single slit uh, diffraction video. I mean, he's promised to do it. Do you think he's going to really do that? Do you think he's going to make a video explaining how diffraction creates the pattern in the single slit? <laughs> well, you know, there's no way to do that. It's exactly the same concept. It has to do with, you know, uh, vectors being in phase and out of phase. It's exactly the same math. It's exactly the same shit. Anyway, because they deflect off the surface and hit each other so this is your straw man you think when somebody says they have a particle theory that the particles have to behave as you say they have to behave and there can't be any other explanation so bricks hit me and then the brick stops moving it couldn't be that the brick has energy the brick hits me it sticks to me and moves me okay I move with the brick me and the brick move together at a slower speed and then a brick from the other direction hits me and both bricks reflect that's not a possibility uh, yeah it is <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually the right answer too bad you didn't think of it anyway using a single slit the area no light would be near the surface wall the area of no light would from near the surface wall form near the surface wall so what the hell are you talking about so he means the uh, the side of the slit I suppose I don't know on the opposite side of the laser <laughs> so it's, it's, there's no there's nothing to make out of that uh, it clearly does happen though that the the image does go both ways it just happens to be a fact of again reality um, that um, photons do like to pair uh, you know one goes this way one goes that way because the action is really this an electron moves forward when it moves forward it hits more energy you know, the energy is coming at it and it hits more and it actually moves forward fast enough where it collects that energy essentially and creates a higher density of energy in that direction and the opposite thing happens when I move it away, it gets more invisible. Less things reflect off of it. 
less energy goes towards you. So when I move my hand away, you get less energy than if I just left my hand here. And you certainly get less energy than if I move my hand forward. So that's the nature of a photon. It's created by an electron moving. And uh, but it's obviously going to be more than one electron because of polarization. But anyway, but I've been over all this you know, many hundreds of times. Um, so <clears throat> I already did that. Uh, interference pattern wouldn't be. No, we didn't do the second part, right? The area of light would form. Yeah, we did that part. Angle down more certain. What is this? Because the slit opening prevents the particle to angle down. What? Using a single slit, the area of no light would form near the surface wall on the opposite side of the laser. Okay. Because the slit opening prevents the particle to angle down more than a certain amount. So again, this isn't about photons hitting and reflecting off surfaces. It's about photons hitting electrons. See, there's electrons in the universe. Maybe you don't believe in electrons, but yeah, they're a fact. The interference pattern wouldn't be much of a pattern. So clearly it's just as much of a pattern as you want to do the experiment carefully enough, you'll get 70. I've seen it. I've done it. 70 little bars. 70. Uh, because there is an equal chance of hitting where the dark spot would be on the detector. The detector is a screen in most cases, okay? You don't need a detector, okay? It's really easy to do. No detector required except for your own uh, eyes. Um, thus, a straight line of light would form. So, thus it wouldn't because it's still in phase and out of phase between the vectors of the two surfaces that are creating the pattern because they're creating the photons that aren't going straight. So you really don't understand any of the, even the conventional argument, you don't really understand any of the real physics, right? And you do this arrogant, well, this is even probably good evidence of why I should have just said the hell with this comment. Two, one, two, three, five. So we can't manage, <laughs> we can't manage to count to five accurately. Oh, yeah. Anyway, ether theorist, that's what he called himself, so, yep. Anyway, the biggest problem is mass and volume uh, deficit. Uh, I don't see how that's a problem. Defect. The biggest problem is mass and volume uh, defect. But how could that mean something to somebody? Light particles hitting anything would build up and increase the mass of the object. So this only, this only works if you're, again, going to force a, a somebody who believes in particles to believe that force, particles, the stuff that's moving the speed of light, actually stops moving. That photons actually run out of energy and they just hit something and stop. And then they're stuck there like dust. And they pile up. Uh, nobody believes that, I don't think. I don't think there's anybody that holds that theory. <laughs> so that's just straw man um, sorry no sale uh, just one more thing uh, it does take more energy to make something move faster now I've obviously not argued that you can move something faster without adding energy the argument is is whether it should take four times as much energy so I'm going one mile an hour I decide to go two miles an hour and it takes me four times the amount of energy to go the extra mile an hour I can't add the extra mile an hour using the same consumption rules that, of fuel consumption that it took me to move the first mile an hour. Somehow the rules all of a sudden change and it takes twice as much energy for me to move just one more mile an hour faster. So two miles an hour takes four gallons, let's say. One mile an hour takes one gallon. That's their theory. That's the argument I'm arguing against. That's what the theory says, shit for brain. Um, so again, you, you, what is this crap you type in my video? If I typed obnoxious crap like this, I, I type one, two, three, five, and just um, basically premised everything I said on things that are patently not true. They're just not true. 
I've never argued it doesn't take more energy. It's just stupid. Of course it takes more energy to go two miles an hour. It should take two gallons of gas. If it takes one gallon to go one mile an hour, it should take two gallons to go two miles an hour. That's what I'm arguing shit for brain. Not four gallons. Otherwise, we would all have infinite energy. So, it really hasn't paid any attention to a motherfucking thing down in this channel. And he just decides to type some shit. So, I'll just say fuck you. That's what I'll say. See you later. Try again. And if you fail again, then I'll just block you. Because you're really, really stupid. And you're rude. And you're obnoxious. Ugh. Ugh, people. Okay. Uh, let's see. Then I've got enough power cell. Right, we already did that. Yeah, we already did that. Alright, so... If, <coughs> if the better telescope is 400 times better... So, this is a person trying to explain how 400 times better really isn't 400 times better. It's only twice as good. So, 400 times better resolution isn't 400 times better. Right? So, so, I don't know how else to say that. So, if, if the resolution on my computer is 10 by 15, you know, that's all. I just get 10 pixels by 15 pixels. It's not 400 times better to have 4K. I don't know what the real number is, but, you know, it's something like that. That's only twice as good. I, and you use a telescope 200 times inferior to that. Yes, so you've only used up 200 of your 400 times better. You still have 200 times better left over still. You only used up 200 of it. Then you're not 200 times better off. So again, so he's just pretending real numbers aren't real numbers. You're only twice better off. Well, yes, you're only twice as good as the, the circumstance from where you have elevated it by spending 200 of your tokens, um, now you can, you know, doubling your tokens would be 400. But that's not the point. The, obviously, the point is is that where you originally started from, you still have 200 times of potential to increase your height, if that's what we were talking about. So you're starting off at zero. You use 200 to get to two, the height of 200. Okay, and now you're going to reestablish a new norm at 200 and say, well, I'm only going twice as good. You know, it's still 200 times going to be better than your original experiment, right? The Eddington experiment wasn't done with a 200 times inferior telescope with 400 times better resolution. It wasn't done using half of 200. Okay, it was back where it was 400 times less resolution. It was 400 times dirtier an image. And that's the comparison. So, I mean, this is just such a perfect example of people who don't care about the truth. They just want to defend really bad science. So it's an unrepeated experiment with better technology. It really is a disgrace to science that they still talk as if it proves something when obviously it's a terribly flawed and imperfect and tainted piece of scientific evidence. Um, they should just fess up um, that it wasn't very good science. It's no better than the clay experiments proving kinetic energy from the 1700s. It's just as big a mistake. Um, you know, bad physics, really bad science. And here they come to defend it. I'm just going to make a generic defense and pretend 400 times better resolution from space isn't real. That the Hubble telescope isn't a real thing. That the Hubble telescope didn't use actually a smaller mirror, you know, than the biggest mirrors on land-based telescopes, and get much, much better images because of this very fact that there's 400 times better resolution from space. It's not two times better, it's 400 times better. Oh, just, you know, people are so dishonest. <laughs> it's just so bad. Well, I'm just going to block you. Because this is so dishonest. To pretend 400 times doesn't mean 400 times. This is just, you know, that that's, you're just saying you don't even want to pay attention to being, you know, um, 
an honest fourth grader. You can't even manage that. Fourth grade science, you'll you'll cheat. You know, that just makes you such a shitty person. All right, the next asshole. Yeah, all this crap. So this is the infamy guy who I, you know. So he won't talk about the actual subjects in the actual videos, the actual physics. He's just going to paraphrase and make some general argument that, no, your argument doesn't mean anything. Even though you made it, you explained it, you drew it, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, because I have a positive opinion of scientists and they do good work. And so I'm just going to keep saying that. Even though you'll play the scientist doing bad work, you'll show him being wrong. It just doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'm just going to keep saying, I'm just going to keep defending bad science. Because I believe it and I like it. It's a good TV show. They show me pretty pictures. You're just so pathetic. So there won't be a single argument, I predict. I haven't read all of this yet. Uh, I, I bet there won't be a single argument relevant to the actual, what was actually in the video. Okay. So, he says, I don't have time or will to watch all your videos. So, you know, when he says this, you are. Uh, anyway, um, and you have no obligation to, to watch all the videos, but I'm just saying you want to comment on something and you don't want to watch any of the videos. And frankly, the video was self-contained. The arguments in the video, I clearly illustrated where he's using... I drew it right for you personally. For you personally, I drew it. And I said, this is what he thinks the double slit experiment is. That's it. Okay, you shine your laser beam. This is you shine your light on this. This is the double slit experiment. This object. This isn't the double slit. No. No, this is. And I drew this for you. And I'm drawing it again for you. And instead of conceding and saying, well, yeah, that's pretty silly because that's the single impediment experiment. That's just doing the single slit experiment. That's just two surfaces. Uh, I mean, obviously, that's not the double slit experiment. That's the two surface experiment. Instead of just admitting the truth, you're doing this bullshit. I mean, you're, you're, you're such a, sh a shithead. Anyway, one has to go past the insults. I'm sorry, they're not, they're not in meant as insults. They're just facts. The fact is, is you weren't on the subject. You didn't pay any attention to the stuff in the video, the actual video. All right, and you just started talking this absolute baby talk shit about how Jesus walked on water, and you know it in your heart. Well, fuck your heart. Fuck your silly impressions. I just provided clear evidence that the science sucks and you won't admit it you're so dishonest you're so fucking dishonest all right no one has to go <clears throat> one has to go past the insults and unsystematic spiel so again there's everything systematic about the spiel i'm sorry everything about what i've argued are simple arguments you don't get the argument that a square box a square impediment a needle isn't a double slit you don't understand the distinction between sticking a needle in front of something and having a double slit experiment. You don't understand the, dis the huge difference between this and this. Okay, to try to understand what you're saying. So, no, it's really clear what I was saying. I was making a, a really direct argument. I even put through a, a couple of, come on, fuck you, you can't see that? I even emphasized the goddamn point. His own mathematics didn't predict the very pattern he was showing on a wall. He did a demonstration, and the demonstration had nothing to do with the 15 minutes of mathematics he did. The mathematics had no envelope pattern in it. It had no anything that would resemble a right answer to the question, how does it work? Not even close. All right, and I clearly illustrated that, and this is the crap you, you type. Amazing bullshit. Uh, if this, <coughs> uh, whatever it is, it's an argument against their theory, clearly pointing out they're full of shit. And the obvious counter to that is 
if they're full of shit, maybe somebody else isn't. Maybe there's a rational theory that gets correct answers. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can find that. And that's the other side to this uh, coin. The first, uh, my first obligation is to give you reason to doubt them. Well, I've provided more than enough of that. Okay. And then my second obligation is to explain what I see as a clearly winning okay, theory that does answer the questions, that doesn't cheat, that doesn't lie about how it's the greatest mathematics in the history of mankind when it doesn't get right answers. If this, whatever it is, theory, a complaint. So it's just a complaint. So if I say that, you know, a surgeon's using a dirty knife, and I point it out to you, it's a dirty knife, that's just complaining. It doesn't mean anything. Why, why are you complaining about the surgeon and his behavior? Why should, why should he use a clean scalpel? <laughs> Who the fuck are you to complain about that? Amazing. Um, what's written down. So, so again, it's written down in the very description of the video. Okay, so in the description of the video, there's a bunch of writing in there. Um, and yes, it's not going to go through. It's not a book. Okay, it's not a textbook. It's not going to explain everything to you. Okay, but it's highlighting the key points. Okay, then there would be some set of propositions to consider. Um, I'm sorry, there, you don't even need to consider them. There was a simple thing pointed out. There's dirt on the scalpel. You're pretending it doesn't exist and it doesn't matter. That's the clear truth here. I point out the clear, overt, obvious error, all right? The fact that he's not describing the double slit because he doesn't, his, his math isn't describing the envelope pattern and it's a key feature of the pattern. Uh, it's not even in it. And it doesn't get the right answer. It doesn't locate the size of the bars right, or they're, you know, it doesn't get the size of them right, and it doesn't get their location right. It scores a zero on the accuracy test, and I demonstrated that clearly. And you're just playing a denial game. That's not what I did. Well, that's exactly what I did, and I emphasized it just for you, the key points. I drew the little box and said, look, do you think that's a double slit? I asked you the question. Did you answer the question? No. Because you're a sack of shit. Dishonest, intellectually incapable, okay, of having something called integrity. No intellectual integrity. Typical mathematics would give a generalization and then some examples. I, I mean, it's not even a generalization. It's a wrong answer. You want to pretend a generalization can be, hey, it can be way the fuck off. It doesn't matter. Generalization means we don't have to be anywhere near the truth. It can take four times more gas because we say so. We generalized it into a mathematical formula that says so. We don't have to prove it so. Who cares if it's wrong? All right. There's a lot of prior knowledge required to begin to understand physics at this level. La 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 la. It's a two slit experiment. It's a simple model you're describing. What happens? What is light, and what, it, what does it do, and how does it do it when it goes through this little process? There's no, there, this is, this, you don't need to know calculus, and you don't need to know a whole bunch of complex mathematics to understand conceptually the argument. It's about path length differences. That's been you know, way gone over in these, in these videos over and over again. Oh, you're such a dishonest piece of shit. If kinetic energy and the double slit experiment are garbage, it's garbage theory in a sense there's absolutely no evidence for what they say. Wave theory does not win. Okay, it's mechanics don't win. Water isn't like light. Sound doesn't do what light does. Okay, it's just a fact. The double slit in sound doesn't create two patterns. The double slit in water doesn't create two patterns. Light does something distinctly different, and you assholes just want to keep saying it's, it's my generalization says it's the same thing. I say so by rule of uh, I don't have to get right answers. You do, okay? I'll scrutinize you. But nah, my physics, I don't have to get right answers. You're such a fucking hypocrite. Uh, then I want to know what else is garbage. Well, as I'm pointing out, Einstein's silly, dopey theory of some kind of bent 
nothing, whatever the bent nothing is. Yeah, that's a stupid garbage theory, okay? There's no bent nothings in the universe making anything happen. There has to be a real force. Gravity actually does give things momentum. It actually is a physical reality that they change when they're in gravity. And um, this idea that somehow it's because electrons know what bent space is and they know which way they're supposed to go doesn't even work in three dimensions. You can't bend space in three dimensions and make any sense out of it. It's a convergence. It's a vacuum cleaner, for fuck's sake. Do you think they've proven the existence of the vacuum cleaner? Or where am I supposed to start looking for the truth? I guess you first look for finding wrong answers. If somebody's telling you fish, talking fish stories, well, you say, that's probably not the place to look. And, you know, Jesus walked on water, photons are entangled, and they, you know, they talk to each other. Oh, what's happening to my poor little twin? Where, where are you, twin? What are you doing? Yeah, if they're telling you stories like that, you should say, well, until you show me some kind of real evidence, fuck you. Too silly. Oh, you're just such a pathetic shit. <clears throat> are you the only source of the truth? No. But most, okay, <laughs> look, let's say half of what I'm arguing, somebody else has argued. Other people have come to the conclusion that the kinetic energy theory is horseshit. Now, they've come to it for some different reasoning arguments, okay? No one's used exactly my arguments that, well, obviously Leibniz was a religious kook. That's uh, an off. The formula started off being 100% wrong in the sense they didn't even have the half in front of it for 100 years, and they said it was proven. So they proved a theory that was 100% wrong, okay? <laughs> they were all happy with it, okay? And it was getting 100% wrong answers. The, the, the answer, they were saying the answer was 200, but the answer was 100. The right answer, supposedly, okay? Um, so yeah, everybody makes different arguments. Um, there might be, there's other people that had particle theories of gravity, but they didn't build them out of the same kind of properties that I have, the, the ones with these simple properties. Um, so for some of this, yeah, I guess I'm the only source. I'm sorry, that just happens to be the truth, <laughs> you know, um, of a right answer. But there's lots of people telling you their answer is wrong, and you should listen to some of those arguments. Now, I have to admit that most of the dissidents out there that have a voice are doing it from some angle. They want to prove ether or some other horseshit or free energy. They don't really, they don't have any honest fingers in the game. The Decinti guy, you know, these people all have agenda. I can make a spaceship that goes faster than light or some kind of horse shit, absolute horse shit. So, yeah, you have to be kind of discriminant. You have to use your, your discretion. Yeah, and I, I, look, I gave you every reason to um, trust me in the sense that I didn't tell you anything in those videos. Those last two videos you did watch, okay? The two videos you did watch, I didn't say anything dishonest in those videos. I showed you what they're doing. I showed the pattern on the screen, and I explained to you this is what they think a double slit is. They think it's a fucking box. Do you think it's a box? Do you think that's you called that box there a double slit pattern? I mean, a double slit experiment? So right there, you have enough evidence to say, wow, that is pretty outrageous. I mean, a, a key quantum mechanics. I mean, Richard Feynman says this is the key effect in physics. You know, without this effect, uh, we're all full of shit, pretty much. Um, this experiment. This experiment is the foundational cornerstone of their bullshit. And I showed you pretty clearly their cornerstone is made out of crap. Okay. There's no picture of a photon, but using your, but you're using pictures to explain its behavior. Yeah, it's called modeling. It's a real great logical concept. Everybody's done it for thousands and thousands of years. People have drawn maps, okay, and they've drawn pictures of how events would take place. And before they invent objects, they sort of draw it down on paper first to see if it'll all work. <clears throat> you know, people design houses that way, architecture, you know, this is a common practice, fuckhead. Oh, God, that was so bad. Uh, to explain its behavior, yes, I'm explaining its simple properties, okay? The forces go the speed of light and don't interact with each other. That is, if they hit each other, it's all always equal. 
nothing changes okay so if force a hits force b okay it's exactly the same as if force a doesn't hit have force b so the rule is is that force a and force b hit each other well force b goes this way force a goes that way and guess what it looks exactly the same as if they just missed each other and went right through each other so forces don't create any change in the universe and the change happens when the force bits the little bits of momentum actually do hit a piece of matter an electron or a proton because they move them much slower okay there's a much a decrease in velocity while it's pushing the electron and that decrease of velocity means now you have all kinds of changes in timing and the universe does in fact change and also the the angles obviously change i can hit an electron that already has momentum and i won't get the vector of the original right the original vector or this vector i won't get either one of those i'll get a combination of them and that's a key change in the universe now because you didn't preserve energy in the either dimension you created a new bastardization Head. Head. All right. Oh, I missed this part. Are you the only source of the truth? <sighs> have you read Newton? You don't have to read Newton. Okay, so, I mean, let's just understand. Newton was talking um, about an idea that's really simple, but it was really new to the world. So it's got a whole bunch of crap in it that you really don't need to, to hear or to know. Okay, and it's described in ways that are incomplete in the sense that Newton didn't even have the word energy yet. Um, you know, so there's a lot of stuff missing. But quite obviously, I'm not the one perverting Newton. So again, I can show you Newton's formula. You know, I did it in the video. I'm, here I am going to do it again for you. And, and what's, what's your argument going to be? I just don't understand. If you could actually stay on the subject and you could actually deal with the subject. So this is what Newton said. Okay, this is Newton. All right, Newton said the force acting on you will equal the change in your mass times your velocity over whatever period of time you wish to understand the force in. So I can find out what's the force per second or per minute or per hour, or I could just say per interaction. And if I say per the interaction, okay, then this is turned into a one. This is one unit. Okay, and so we really have force equals your change in your momentum. Force will give you momentum. It will affect your momentum. You will accelerate or decelerate based on a quantity of force that's going to affect you. And again, you can do it per second. I can give it a per second notation, or I can just give it a total. What's the total of the interaction? What's the total change? Total amount of force, total change in, in momentum. So this simple formula, and even if we kept it in the original form with the time underneath it, right? They say this is what it is. Okay, now you want to explain to me how this is the complex form and this is the simple form. You want to explain how these two things should have an equal sign. That somehow these two things are equal. That they, that, that they're, they have some common connection that it's quite obvious that this is a square and uh, it's quite obvious this is a two. Is it? No, it's not. Uh, all right, anyway. I don't get it. So again, what don't you get? They're, they're making assertions. You require them to produce zero evidence to defend those assertions, and you just believe. That's it. You don't need any evidence. So they can just tell you that it takes four times as much gasoline to go 60 miles an hour as it takes to go 30 miles an hour. They can just say it, and you believe them. You don't have to, they don't have to show you any proof. All right, there's no picture of a photon. Okay, um... Do you need math to know when something... Do I need math to know when someone is bad at explaining a subject? I'm just saying, that. do you think that errors are important? 
and if a physicist is making a lot of errors, like the point I made about the converging light, you understand that if two pieces of light are converging, that is, they're moving towards each other, they can only work in the space between them, where they started from, their origin. So if they're one millimeter apart out here, they can't converge even at a billion light years away. They can't converge except inside of that one millimeter. They can't converge over here or over here or some other place. They can only converge and be the same length inside of that tiny amount of space. Do you understand that simple piece of geometry or not? Are you going to be a lying, hypocritical sack of shit and say you don't get the concept? Why is that important? Well, if you're saying you're making a whole fringe, right? There's a, hey, it's equal distance. It's got to be a bright. Well, brights are really big. Brights aren't little tiny things inside of one half of a millimeter on the screen. So how could it be a fringe bright when it can't be a fringe? Because it can't grow in size. You don't think that's a valid argument, fuckhead? People often exclude information. They have no sufficient understanding of when making models of the world. See, you're just talking absolute shit. There's no demonstration that you know anything about this shit, and you're going to describe their behavior. <laughs> Amazing bullshit. Equations are tools, not replicas of reality. Well, I'm the one who's arguing that equations are only as good as you form them. And obviously their equation, their one half mv squared was first formed as mv squared. And for a hundred years, they were certain it was the truth. It was mv squared. It was even more off. Oh, fuck, you're just such an asshole. Compared to people who don't think textbooks are good sources of information, uh, I think experiments are good sources of information. And when somebody honestly describes an experiment or dishonestly, do you think it's an honest description? Eddington wrote in his own journal, I wouldn't stake my life on these results because his data was so bad. Okay, the experiment went so badly. He had little expectation that he was going to get anything good out of this crap. And he didn't get anything good out of it. All right, he got... He got 10% of the image quality he was hoping for. 10%. All right, and we got New York Times headlines out of the experiment. Do you think that's the way it should work? So what do you think the source should say? That, oh, well, this is a marginal experiment to start with. Very hard to do. He did it with broken legs, right? It's hard to run the four-minute mile. And now we're supposed to believe he ran the four-minute mile with a broken leg. Oh, okay. New York Times headline. And never repeated with superior technology. Never took advantage of the 400 times better resolution from space. You think that's good science. That's the way science should be. It's just really great that they don't really prove a goddamn thing they say. So for 200 years, they've been telling you that, uh, you know, one half mv squared is the truth, and yet they haven't produced one single fucking experiment demonstrating the collection of the extra energy beyond momentum. There's not one experiment you can point me to. There's not one piece of evidence in existence of this fucking phenomenon. They don't show the 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour producing half the electricity. I put a generator on its wheel and we just let them roll and we see which one generates more electricity. The 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour or the 10 ton train going 5 miles an hour? Have they done any of these experiments? Anything comparable it can just be 5 pounds train. Same principle applies. There's not one single piece of fucking evidence. That doesn't mean anything to you, does it? No evidence. So you're just going to talk about a textbook as if a textbook should just be a description of a, a fucking fantasy. Well, Jesus walked on the water because he had, well, he also had, he had helper shoes. Uh, okay, they were able to make sandals back then that were very oily, and the oil resisted the water. And so really Jesus walked, and no, they were really big sandals, right? And they were oily. And so he walked on the water because he walked on goddamn rafts. I mean, some kind of bozo, you know, stupid theory. It's just a theory. I mean, without any evidence, it's just talking shit. So they can talk all the shit they want, and you'll buy it. Because it came from a guy in a suit and he went to college. So you'll believe it. And it was written in a textbook somewhere. Yeah. Oh, fuck you.
Hi, I'm pretty good at math and reasoning. So you said right in your other comment that you don't do math. And now you're saying you're pretty good at it. I think your logic skills suck. And, and because reasoning is part, part of reasoning is recognizing when you're being a duplicitous lying sack of shit. Both videos I explained to you, they're saying the double slit experiment is a brick. That's the double slit experiment. I just put a brick in front of the light. There, double slit. No, it's the brick experiment. It's not the double slit experiment. I just can't see where your understanding of the math is from. What, what the fuck understanding of the math is from? What are you talking about? There's no math in the argument here. The argument was is clearly his math isn't getting right answers. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not getting the right answer, you stupid shit, and it has no hope of getting the right answer. You didn't understand when I said, well, if you only have one variable that you're changing, you can't create two changing patterns. You can't cause variation in two different things. Oh, you're just such a, you're such a sack of shit. Like why you're using changing the mass in the kinetic energy equation example. What the fuck could that possibly mean? You're just making a comparison between something that's half as massive, okay, and, and just has an inverse velocity. So it has twice as much velocity, has exactly the same, okay, momentum. The 10 ton train going 5 miles an hour has exactly the same momentum as the 10 ton train going as the, yeah, you know, the inverse. They have the same exact momentum and the point is, is your people are saying, your, your little club, the one you like because it has cookies or whatever the fucking treats are, it has a lot of geeky weirdos, okay, making videos in, in support of it, they're saying, one has twice as much capacity to change the world. The eight pound bowling ball going twice as fast can knock down twice as many pins as the 16 pound ball. That's their theory. Even though no bowler on earth has ever been able to find this extra energy and, and to and utilize it to win tournaments, even though they've completely failed to find any utility in a lighter ball and not any of them ever use one lighter, you say it's the truth, and I'm the, I'm an asshole because what am I objecting to? Oh, I mean you're such a fucking piece of shit. You don't understand. I don't understand why you're objecting. It all seems to fit perfectly. Bricks are double slit experiments. It's obvious. The masses are supposed to be equal. What are you talking about? They're supposed to be equal. What are you even talking about? You're making comparisons that force things to have different velocities. I didn't change the, the, the mass in, in the gasoline experiment. I said, look, if I'm going with 30 miles an hour, it takes two gallons of gasoline. They're saying it takes four gallons of gas. No, they're saying it takes eight. Um, I should just stick with the one. It's one gallon of gas to go 30 miles an hour. They're saying it takes four gallons of gas to go 60. That's a simple principle. You believe it. Why do you believe it? There's not a single shred of evidence it's true. None. Zero evidence. How are you getting velocity from position without calculus? So this is just more bullshit that somehow this is about calculus. There's no calculus involved. When a cue ball hits another uh, uh, ball, there's no calculus. Because there's no time to, to figure it out. We have no idea. Because the energy doesn't have to move through any... You know, in, in Newton's cradle, the energy has to move from ball one to ball two to ball three to ball four. So it has to go through all of them, and it moves, and we found that it moves, they found, that it moves at the speed of sound in the material. So if there's steel, it moves at the speed of sound of the material. But when one ball hits another ball, it's instantaneous from our perspective. Our science can't make it into a timed event and split that little timed event into something. The energy appears to just go from one to the other like nothing changed. It goes straight through. It just jumps right from this one into that one. No calculus involved, fuckface. So it's just horseshit to say this is something to do with, oh, you need convoluted math to understand the concept. No, you don't. Fuck you. So you're just pulling shit. 
or you're saying it's a dot product in three-dimensional space. I'm saying they're using the dot product to justify multiplying the velocity times the velocity when there's no reason to do that. They create an artificial placeholder for direction because, I look, I already said all of this and here you are playing a game like you didn't understand. I said they're, they're saying kinetic energy is a scalar and they're saying momentum is a vector. So momentum, somehow we know momentum's direction, but somehow we don't know kinetic energy's direction. So I don't know the direction of the energy. When a car is going down the road at 60 miles an hour, somehow I don't know the direction of the energy. It's a mystery which way the energy is going. It's apparently not going exactly the same direction as the momentum. Right? When of course it is. Of course, this scalar's horseshit is just lies and more bullshit. Obviously, we know what direction the energy is going in. Obviously, it's just as much a vector as the other thing's a vector. Um, and they're just using it as an excuse to create a dot product, which is a, a direction locator. So they're creating this little mechanism to follow the direction as if we're confused which way the car is going. No, there's no confusion about which way the car is going. So it's just a fake placeholder. And then they, they create the fake placeholder and then they pretend it wasn't a fake placeholder. They pretend it's actually real. And now their equation says V times V. And so they create 2V. So all I have to do is turn momentum into a scalar. And I can do the same thing. And create little magical extra things to multiply times each other. It's just horse shit. I suppose you, <clears throat> you just use notion from vector calculus. Is that it? Notation. I don't use any of it because it has absolutely nothing to do with the simplicity of Newton's statement. F equals a change in your momentum. And you can define F per second or per minute or per millisecond or per hour. You can make it into anything you want. Or you can just make it, what's the total? F total. Okay, then you get rid of this. Because this is now 1, the total amount of time. And so you have F equals MV. There, you're done. All right, so you're just such a pathetically dishonest sack of fucking goddamn steaming shit to type this tripe. So this is the third video where I personally instructed you. Do you believe... It's good science to describe the two-slit experiment as this. Do you think that has any scientific integrity? When Richard Feynman did it, when all of these people do it, do you think they're being honest to the double-slit experiment to describe it as this? That's good science, in your opinion. Fucking lying sack of shit. I won't answer the question. Fuck you and this horse shit. Oh, where's the other? oh, he typed another one? No. How'd this one get on top? Oh, they, he jumped me to the video. Oh, I hate YouTube. All right, well, you're getting deleted, of course, but, um, you know, I'll give you another chance. I'll give you one more try, and then you're done. To just keep on playing this fucking game that I somehow didn't make an argument. I didn't provide any evidence. I didn't do anything here. I didn't explain anything. Fuck you. You're just a dis an intellectually dishonest sack of shit, shyster piece of crap. Propagandizing for absolutely horrible fucking goddamn physics. You're just sitting here defending s surgeons with dirty scalpels. And you think you're doing the right thing. Well, you're doing the wrong thing, fucker. You're just part of the goddamn problem, not part of the fucking solution. You're not looking for the fucking truth. You're looking for every reason in the world to deny the fucking truth. You're its fucking goddamn enemy. You're not its ally. All right, so Jeff who uh, says a lot of positive crap, so maybe we should just ignore it. No, we'll, uh, we'll just do it for the sake of the argument. He puts it in different words than I would. There's a lot less fuck yous in it. Uh, even when shown extremely obvious examples of problems with the current theory, instead of addressing those actual problems, ex ex explaining how it's really uh, okay, good surgeons d um, 
can not understand what a bacterium is and still be a very good surgeon. Uh, no, they really can't. Okay. Um, people will predictably revert to their lazy, religious-minded, fallacy-laden ways of deciding what to believe in. Uh, 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 you know, but I'm arguing that no, intelligent people don't do that. I mean, really, they, they really can rise above it, can't they? Come on. Is it really just that they don't like the Christian God? But yeah, they'll take any God. Give me any God but the Christian God and I'll jump. You know. It's just that sad, I guess. As though they <clears throat> were any way to discern reality from fiction. Appeal to authority, appeal to majority, etc. Um... When again, it's just a logical thing, right? We all know we live in this real world. We know what's going to happen in Las Vegas, all this kind of stuff. This really shouldn't be debatable. The rules of life are the way they are. Um, you know, why are people pretending they can just make up this crap? The alternative explanation you provided for two slit works fine and no waves are required and no superposition and no entanglement and none of the other core shit that goes along with it. Again, I find it funny that they also claim light waves are a fundamental particle, not a part, <clears throat> but not a particle. Yeah, well, the whole use of, of conventional physics, calling it even particle physics or any of that, is such a lie when they obviously think everything's some sort of vibrating string. They're all string theorists. They're all, I mean, it's all so silly. Electrons are just sitting there and vibrating for no reason. They're just sitting there physically going like this for no reason. They're jellyfish. It's jellyfish all the way down for these idiots. That's the fucking, that's their physics. Jellyfish. Everything has an internal mechanism that makes it able to jellyfish all it wants. The energy doesn't have to come from anywhere. The jellyfish don't have to eat. I mean, it's such a stupid and moronic uh, bullshit theory. I find it funny that they also claim light waves are, okay, a particle. Uh, so a wave is something, but not a particle. So a wave is something, which would mean it's not fundamental at all. Yes, obviously, if as soon as you create a wave, then you just create a medium. And they don't even have the balls to say they're etherists, right? They, don't even, they won't even call it ether. They just call it field. Field. Or space. You know, bent space is obviously another medium. What's bending? Well, something has to be bent, right? Nothing can't be bent. That would be ridiculous. Uh, it just blows my mind how much these people who are supposed to be brilliant keep contradicting their own theories. Well, yeah, the fact that they can't figure out that this is not a double slit experiment. I mean, fuck, that's really dumb. Uh, when you brought up <clears throat> magnetism and filings, yeah, I have to make the magnetism video, a uh, sensible answer for that. Uh, just because, again, it's just so obvious the magnets aren't making energy, okay? The magnets are reflecting what hits them, okay? They're reflecting the world, and they reflect it with a pattern. Oh, uh, it's just so obvious. I thought, well, <clears throat> that's uh, another entire can of worms that new people will have very little clue about. I wager probably only a handful of us understand how it really works. Uh, not that it's overtly comp overly complicated. It's just there's a lot of things wrong with the way things are taught. Yeah, I mean, it's just the whole fact that they, yes, this is basically you could teach it just recognizing that there is no capacity to, I don't get larger and larger, right? So I'm in the world, the world's hitting me with all kinds of energy, all kinds of heat, all kinds of stuff. Obviously, I'm radiating just as much as I'm getting in. Or I would change in some substantial way, and I'm not changing in a substantial way. So what you think in terms of everything's just absorbing and re-radiating? Well, that's what magnets are doing too. Oh, and a lot to explain, especially known not many people spend much time and effort trying to understand what you mean. They don't spend, obviously, they don't spend any honest time. That's the, the key ingredient. There's no intellectual dis honesty. Puro, for example, grotesque, disgusting, so intellectually dishonest. He knows some of these facts. He knows this physics isn't what it should be, and he just keeps selling it, you know. He's smart enough to know that 
this is not the description of a double slit experiment. I mean, no one could think he's too stupid to be able to figure that out. And yet he'll go to extensive lengths to t defend these dirty scalpeled scientists, to defend this really bad science. I mean, the history, again, the history of the kinetic energy formula is disgusting science. It's not just bad, it's disgusting. The level of bad is so high. And for people like Piero, obviously no intellectual integrity to admit that that was really bad science. That might as well just have been voodoo. They did voodoo demonstrations. It is the same as, as saying Ken Wheeler does really good experiments. Same difference. It's that bad. All right. So anyway. Fucking people. People are so dishonest. So dishonest. This lying sack of shit's everywhere. Disgusting fucking planet. All right. So... That's enough. But it's just over, right? You just saw it. Everybody already just saw it. I've made, you know, I made two videos pointing really simple stuff out. This isn't a double slit experiment. Okay, I mean, it's just a simple, you can't get a simpler. And they're just pretending, oh, no, no, that's not a problem. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, from a certain angle. If I apply calculus to it, it looks just like it. I mean, it's insipid. It's clearly moronic for a physicist to sit there and give you the math for this and tell you, I just did the math for this. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just... All right. Yeah, just no point, right? When people are this dishonest, there's just, I mean, there's no conversation. So I got to keep hoping that someday there'll actually be an honest man that shows up to watch these videos. You know, an honest man who knows something about physics, who actually, you know, spent some time in a, in a university learning this crap. Um, let's see if we can find one honest physicist on this fucking shithole planet. Uh... Hey, didn't work. Keyboard's broken. <sighs> yeah, sorry. Got to keep consistent. I need my my video ending feature. Yeah. There we go. This has been a draft science video presentation to a dumb, stupid, and dishonest world.